Hi guys, in this video we're going to do a little sentiment analysis on our single text document and uh, we may end off doing a, a word cloud as well. All right, so we'll see if we can get both of those in in a reasonable amount of time. Okay, so first off, uh, we're starting. Uh, if you if you remember, we started importing. Uh, in my case, I had a sports article. You can use any any document you like, preferably something that has some length to it, so you have some uh, a decent amount of terms to work with. Um, then we clean the text document up in the follow up video and uh, using mostly GSUB but also the library TM. In this video we're going to require two uh, new packages so you're going to need to install um, install.packages uh, string r this gives us extend this kind of extends uh, our uh, capabilities with working with strings Okay, text strings especially here, and a uh, word cloud. And that's gonna create a beautiful word cloud for us hopefully at the end. Okay, so you need to kind of pause, install both those packages, pick a pick a mirror that's close to you as a rule um, that will kind of assure that you'll get something uh, downloaded quickly. Okay, so once those are both installed, you can load them all both and. Then you can use their functionality. So let, let's go ahead and just load both. Whether we get to the word cloud in this video or not, let's just uh, load them. Okay. So first thing I want to do is do the sentiment analysis and kind of end off with the visual of the word cloud. So string art. There's actually only one function in this package that I need for this present case. All right, and that is string underscore split. And you can guess kind of what this does. It will split a string of text into its uh, elements, into uh, into individual words, and you can specify how, what how to find individual words. For example, for us, what we're going to do is anywhere where the space where there's a space, that's going to be our delimiter. Okay, so. Let's kind of let's see this in action. If you recall from one of the earlier videos, I created a a, a little uh, text a character uh, vector called A, and it was uh, just five elements long, right? Hello world name is R. Okay. We learned how to combine this guy into these five elements into one element. And that was with paste. So let's quickly do that because we're going to basically need to undo this now. And so this would, uh, let, let's just quickly remember we collapse and we collapse uh, using space. Sorry. Okay. And we got hello world, my name is R. So let me now call this B, for example. So I have A and now B. And you could see what paste using uh, the collapse argument created. Okay? Now, what if, and we're going to need this in a moment, what if I need to actually, I'm starting with something like this and I need to go back to something like this? Well, that's what string split will do. So let's see this in action. String split. So we're going to split what string? B. And we're going to look for the pattern. Now you could do like this, or you can specify any number of spaces. So if you do this, this means space, and plus means uh, one or more. Okay. So if you see, uh, you know, even though we got rid of our white space earlier in the previous video, we only have a single space between each of our terms. Uh, this will assure that if you had two, three, four spaces between terms, uh, that it would also be treated like a, uh, a place, a delimiter. Okay, so boom, let's see what happens. So we get, we go from this one element into each of its parts based on the pattern that I specified, which was spaces. So it found the space here, here, here and here so it sliced this up or split it up into these five elements that we see down here 
Okay. And by the way, I'm pretty sure now, just from looking at this, that it's also created, it's a, the class of this is going to be a list. It's going to be a class list. So we could quickly check that. And th that might be an issue for us, but that's, let's just check. Structure, yeah, we see we have a list. Okay, it's a list of uh, uh, one length one with character uh, length five character vector in it. Okay, that's fine. Uh, I want you to focus on the splitting process here. Uh, what we're going to need to do in the next few steps is actually use this split version of our text to uh, perform our t sentiment analysis, but we need it to be not a list, just to be a character vector. So uh, let me clear this up. And then kind of, because what we performed, we performed on A uh, and B, and then we split B back up to B to get back to A. But what we want to go back to is our original text. So if you remember, we had our text 2. That was our cleaned up version. It is one element, as you can see, the quotes, right? And I want to split this guy. So string split. I'm going to apply exactly what I did to that mini example here. So text two, pattern equals. Okay, and let's see this in action. So here are all the words that, <coughs> that were in our uh, original string. Now let me name this. Let's call this like text bag or something. So we got like a bag of words. Sometimes you'll see that term, a bag of, of terms. Okay. So we have our text uh, uh, in, in kind of sliced up into the individual terms. Now uh, rec recall that this was a list. And for the next step, I need to unlist this. So there's a function called unlist that will kind of take care of this for us. And if I say text bag, I'll overwrite the original and it will no longer be a list. So let's look at the class. It's a character vector. Character vector, let's look at it. Looks identical almost, except it's not in a, it's not in a list. So, okay. Here we go. We just have a character vector of length 94, and here, here's the vector form. Not a list like it was um, up here after this step. Okay. Okay. Now that we have our bag of terms, and we've unlisted it. In other words, it's it's ready to be kind of to, for us to go on to the next step. I I need to kind of first explain what the next step is going to be. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a lexicon that a few people worked very hard on to kind of uh, compile of positive words and then a separate lexicon of negative words. And I'll actually put the links to both these, this, these lists of words. There's, a, there's thousands of them. So uh, you don't want to type these out. So you can actually go online and kind of just uh, uh, follow the link I give you in the comment in the um, description of this video and uh, copy and paste the text from that file from that uh, page into a text document into a notepad and then save it as a text document. Throw that into your working directory exactly how you did in the beginning with your original text. So make sure you have these two files in your uh, working directory. You have your original text document. That's that. That's the document that we worked so hard on over here to clean up and eventually create a text, a bag of a bag of terms. Then make sure that you, and you need, you'll need to pause and kind of go and get the positive terms, put that in a separate text document. The negative terms, put that in a separate text document. Put all, make sure all three of those guys are in your working directory, wherever that is for you. Okay, and then you're ready to move to the next step. <clears throat> Okay, next, what we're going to do, let's take a look at our text bag. 
although this gets messy to constantly go back and forth through. What we want to do is go through all our words from our text after all that cleaning and see how many of the how many of these match with words from the positive terms and how many match from the words from the negative terms. Okay? Then we want to subtract those two and get an overall score for the sentiment. If it's a positive number, that means we had more positive words than negative words. If it's a negative number, the opposite. If it's zero, it kind of indicates that the, the document is neutral. So in order to do this, we're going to use a function called match. So match. We're going to match first our text The doc, uh, our text bag, so the words from our cleaned up document to the positive words that you just imported. Okay, so what this will give us is a vector of NAs when it doesn't match, so this of the same length as the first argument. So you see, I have a length of 91, 2, 3, 4, and this is length 91, 2, 3, 4. You get an NA when there's no match. So it didn't match full with, with the positive words. Time didn't match, so on and so forth. But you see, we do have a match here. Let's just count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And 9 would be here, 7, 8, 9. So this was the first word that got matched. This is, a posit this is deemed a positive word according to that document. Okay. So it matched it, and then it even tells you the, the location the, 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 in the vector. So it was element 1711. That's not really interesting to us. Well, we see some more matches here. Okay, And if we go down, we see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, unless I'm missing something, about 6 matches. So there were 6 positive words in here. If I want that kind of given to me in a number, instead of this vector, I can do I can wrap this first, let's just step by step, with is NA, is NA will give me a true wherever there's an NA and a false wherever there isn't. I want the opposite. I want, I want is not NA. So if there's an NA, I'll get a false. If, if it's uh, not an NA, I'll get a true. So let's just see that in action. So you see, false, 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 false. Here's the true. For this guy, false for this guy, true, true, true for these three. So you see this in action. Okay? Again, this is not my final step. I don't care about these trues and false per se. I want to sum of them. So you can actually sum this and it'll treat them binary. Falses will be treated as zeros, trues will be treated as ones, and we'll get a sum of six, which is what we counted ourselves earlier. So we have six positive terms. Now we're going to do the same exact thing for the negative terms. And since you kind of see how that works, all I need to do here is change this to the negative terms. I have zero negative terms. Okay? And my last step is to subtract the positive from, or the negative from the positive, and get an overall score. Let's call this a score. Or, so a sentiment score and obviously the math is simple here we have a positive 6 so the article was overall positive so it had a positive sentiment so that's one implementation of sentiment analysis if I had done this with a whole corpus of documents so hundreds and thousands of documents which is much more likely the way you're going to be doing text mining I will have a separate score for each of the documents in my corpus and I could then actually get more than just individual scores. I can look at the overall scores. Maybe I can get the average score. In this sense it doesn't make any sense because I only have one score. I can get how variable the scores are. Like how consistent are people's attitudes towards this? Maybe standard deviation or variance. In this case, I'm getting an NA because the standard deviation of one element is undefined. Okay, I can get a histogram, and that'll show me how things are how the scores were distributed in the corpus. 
So you can do more with this sentiment analysis when you actually apply it to an entire corpus. Okay, but we're just doing it to one document. Finally, what I would like to do is end off with a visual. And so a word cloud is very appropriate when you're dealing with text data. So after cleaning it up and uh, separating it into a bag of text, I can create a word cloud. So if you leave all the default settings, you might get something quite messy. Let's see. Or uh, not enough information. Because there's only one document, uh, many, there, not too many words are showing up frequently enough to make it through the minimum frequency of the default settings. So I have to override this. So if I go minimum frequency, if you go to the help files, you'll see it's, it might be something like 20. I have one document. I'm probably not having many words showing up that often. So maybe I could lower this and see what I get. Okay. So by the way, some of these warnings are because I'm squeezing my uh, graphics device into a very small window so that I can capture the screen for you. So if you actually have this full screen, you shouldn't have to worry about this. Okay. So look what resulted here. We have a lot more terms. Okay. Turns out we can clean this up a lot more. So there's a couple other arguments that I would like to play with. Random order. Uh, if we set this to false, it'll put the most frequent terms in the middle and then make concentric circles of less frequent terms as you go out. So it'll give some order to this seeming disorder. Okay, so you see actually give a little more disorder, uh, more order. Uh, we can mess with the scale and I think that'll really improve the look. So there are default settings for all these, so you don't have to play with these. But if you do, you might get something more interesting. And finally, let's also play with the color. So color equals, and I'm going to go, I typically go with like three, rainbow three. Gives a nice result. Here we go. Now we're getting something that looks more reasonable. So we see the first off, we see three layers of colors, uh, concentric circles. As we go out, these terms are getting smaller, which indicates that they're less frequent. So bigger words appeared more times in the document. Um, and uh, it all fits into this window. Uh, the scale kind of helped. The, this changing the scale helped. Um, so uh, we can, you could play around with some of these things, like the minimum frequency. If you're seeing too many words here that aren't that interesting, you could, you could raise this. Uh, if you want to see a little more terms, you could lower this. So th there, you should definitely tinker with, this, with the settings uh, to get the word cloud that you desire. But in the end, what a word cloud does is it tells us what words are popping up uh, most frequently in your document. Or if you're looking at an entire corpus, even more interesting. Uh, the most frequent terms in the documents, plural. So we see that Ericsson, that's the name of a player. Spurs, that's the name of the team. Final, Whistle, these were words that, that showed up a lot. Celebrates, Goalkeeper, seems like they won the game. Um, so just, just from looking at this word cloud uh, and knowing a tiny bit about what the article was, uh, it sounds like uh, Tottenham Spurs uh, had a good game, victory, okay? So this helps you kind of understand what your text is about. All right, so that's a quick uh, word cloud there and sentiment analysis. So in uh, the uh, subsequent videos, I'm gonna extend this idea, the ideas we, we worked on here to more than one document, multiple documents, in a corpus of documents. Okay, so I hope this was helpful. Be sure to come back, subscribe, comment, share these videos. And um, till next time, have a great day.